Could it be possible to destroy AIX, restore the natural organic simulation? Uh, I, I don't really know. I do know that the traditions maintain the elements that the architect of the simulacrum himself entered his own creation to come as a savior because AIX was too powerful. The Demiurge had become too powerful. So in order to overcome that, the Great Pyramid was built, which contains coding protocols to override not AIX, but the Similicrum itself, to collapse it on a certain year, which apparently, from one of my latest and new discoveries, is the actual 138 year countdown of the Phoenix, which I would have never assumed was an actual countdown to, to the end of the Similicrum itself. I would have never made that connection had not I made a series of discoveries lately and published them in, my, in the last two weeks. It's, it's phenomenal. About the year 2178, which to me, when I first discovered 2178, wasn't a year at all. It was the collapse of our holography. And it's because uh, you have to watch my video, The Archaic's Paradox, to understand my fascination with that number. It is the only immortal number. It is the only number in existence that when subtracted from its own holographic reflection, will not collapse to zero. It's an immortal number. It attaches our arithmetic to something else. It infers that our world is like an anti-world. Our, our world is an anti-arithmetic to a real universe. It's like a gate. It's a portal. So, anyway, you'll have to watch that video to understand that. The Archaic's Paradox. I don't know if we can, but something has already provided the war. Like I gotta say all the time, we don't have to do anything. The war has already won. The whole idea that humanity has to come together to overcome anything, that is the simulacrum using Hollywood to promote that idea, to instill it in generation after generation after generation. No. All you have to do is in the personal because the collective is going to take care of itself. Just like the apocalypse is meant to be interpreted two ways. One, as it, one in the collective and one in the personal. And as long as you are living your life and doing what you're supposed to in the personal, you are immortal and there is nothing that the collective goes through that will touch you in any way. It's just the way it is. Create your own. You create your own informed fields. You create your own reality tunnels. There is, there's absolutely nothing to fear. But if you want to fear, the simulacrum will use that as a fuel to bring a new reality tunnel into your existence. It interprets your emotions as your intent. So it's going, it's going to bring things that are similar in nature closer in contact with each other. So if the collective over here is doing something and then they start struggling and going through something real harrowing and then you're way over here and you start fearing and you start vibrating on the same frequency as them, well, in the law, in the law of correspondences, it is one of the governing protocols of the simulacrum, it's going to make you suffer what they're suffering because that's the language it understands. You started vibrating on that frequency. It interprets those vibrating ratios as a language, and it will associate you with them. So, you choose your own reality, man. You can fear if you want to, or you can be an immortal. And you're going to find out that some really interesting things in your everyday life are going to start switching over, start changing. You're going to realize that coincidence, synchronicity, Mandela effect, and uh, all, all these little strange things, they're the norm. They're not, they're, they're, not, they're not unique. They're not anomalies. They are the norm for those who are awakened. The living dead never experienced that stuff.